essence of our challenge can be put thus. We are constrained by the very same challenges we seek to address, which is poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Ngesintu mvelase sikinyo ayo lentambo okufale si sebenzi suguze sikwele si epezu. From the moment the president declared the COVID-19 pandemic to be a national disaster on Sunday, the 15th of March, the Ministry of Higher Education, Science and Innovation, in conjunction with institutions, have put all our post-school educational institutions on early recess and effectively suspended academic activity. Today, the ministry will be announcing measures in the context of the national COVID-19 measures announced by the Command Council on Wednesday, 29th April, 2020. All the measures to be identified herein follow within the strategic lo logic of the national COVID-19 management strategy and is informed by three overarching considerations as captured in our thematic focus Hashtag save the academic year, save lives. Firstly, whatever we do in the post-school education and training sector, our responsibility is to lower the infection curve. That's our overriding concern. Secondly, we must save the 2020 academic year, but not at the expense of lives. Thirdly, our efforts to save the academic year must, as I say, avoid worsening the infection curve. We will be implementing a risk-adjusted strategy for the entire post-school education and training sector based on the national COVID-19 management protocols and will direct and manage the way institutions carry out their academic mandates at all times within the strategic policy framework. On the 2020 academic year, guided by the work and decisions of the National Command Council, we've decided not to resume with campus-based academic activity throughout the post-school education and training sector, including all universities and TVET colleges, both public and private during the level four lockdown period, which starts tomorrow. The only exception will be the controlled return of final year clinical training students. It's mainly medical students who will also return under strict conditions to also directly assist with the health management campaign of the Department of Health. The risks of a return to normal campus-based activity for thousands of students and staff are simply too great and cannot function successfully outside of the national context of a general lockdown. In fact, to be specific, the formal, our formal institutions in the post-school education and training sector are made up of 2.5 million students. That's a big number, although far less than basic education. Universities and TVET colleges do not operate in a vacuum, but in a historically specific context. Against this background, and with the endorsement by the Command Council, we have decided that the current period from the 1st of May until South Africa transitions or moves into the lower levels of the COVID management strategy, we will use this period to put a number of critical interventions in place ac Out across our post-school education, which will include digital systems, analog, and physical delivery of learning materials to provide a reasonable level of academic support to all our students at all institutions to resume academic learning 
and teaching support. In other words, the fact that we are not opening campus-based does not mean that we're going to sit back. During the month of May, flat out, with a view that as soon as possible, we are able to resume multimodal, remote teaching and learning activities. As we are in an unprecedented emergency, we have to use all available tools to reach our students fully cognizant that it will not substitute the need for contact learning when conditions permit. We are doing this. We want to make assurances to South Africa today. No single student or institution will be left behind in our strategy in terms of ensuring that we do all we can to complete the 2020 academic year. In the meantime, also, we are working hard to secure a universal access deal with the major mobile network operators around data and connectivity to support remote learning. We believe that with the help of Minister Mtembu, we are close to reaching such a deal with the mobile companies so that we are able to provide data to our students. Where physical delivery of learning materials are required and where no immediate digital means are ready, we will also be working to ensure that students are provided with instructional materials. We will also be working to finalize the procurement and distribution of devices, laptops in the main, for all NESFAS assisted students, both in the universities and TVET colleges, as well as the necessary connectivity into digital remote learning platforms. In this regard, I would like to appeal to all students to ensure that they urgently register their correct numbers, it's mostly cell phone numbers, with their institutions, so that when we finalize the educational rate for data, we can load it to the correct numbers so that all students can benefit. By so saying, Minister Mvelas, we are by no means suggesting we're going to be relying only on connectivity. But connectivity is absolutely necessary, though we will also be using other means to reach those students who are not connected. We are also going to use this time to strengthen our remote pedagogic teaching and learning models and sharing this across the TVET and university systems. Securing also, that's what we'll be doing, possible relief, stimulus, or emergency funding to our public institutions in distress, including critical areas of financial support that may be required. We will also be forging a compact for an equitable economic transformation that will ensure the advancement of the economic position of women, youth, and persons with disabilities and that which promote localization and industrialization of our economy. Let me explain this a little. Both our departments, higher education and training, and the Department of Science and Innovation, will also continue to make a contribution to the broader goals of creating the kind of economy we want. That is why some research work is being done now by some of our science councils and some of our institutions in order to support the goal of dealing with all challenges that have now been created by this COVID-19 situation. But also, between now and the whole month of May, we'll be preparing all our campuses with deep cleaning and biosafety protocols to ensure readiness for eventual return of students and staff. And we want to say this, in the provision of personal protective equipment and cleaning materials and all that, we will be prioritizing 
procuring services from small and medium enterprises and cooperatives. So and the Department of Basic Education to coordinate all efforts to successfully and safely implement the 2020 academic year and the phasing in of 2021 academic year. Our intention as a sector is to use this phase for planning and preparation at all our universities and TVET colleges and the mobilization of resources. Our collective efforts during this period remains that of putting appropriate remote learning support systems in place for all our institutions, using whatever means available whilst preparing our institutional capacities for eventual return When students return to campuses, protocols will be in place for the maintenance of physical distance, access to hand sanitizers and protective masks, and continual deep cleaning of facilities. In addition, reopening will entail the 360 degrees screening and or testing of staff and students with environmental cleaning of campuses and residences. We are also identifying sites <coughs> sorry, for quarantine facilities in or near our institutions as may be required. We will also be providing mental health support and other forms of support necessary for staff and students throughout. <coughs> sorry. Uh, my apologies. I need a little bit of energy. For the throat. <clears throat> In a joint effort, Higher Health. Higher Health is our entity that was formed originally by universities. Now it has been extended to all our TVET colleges. Higher Health, supported by the Department of Health, the National Institute for Communicable Diseases the Vice Chancellor's Association known as USAF, and the college principals' organizations, and others. We have developed a comprehensive and clear set of PSET guidelines on managing COVID-19 in the sector post-lockdown. I therefore would like to take this opportunity to announce that these guidelines will be distributed formally to all universities TVET and community education and training colleges and other subsectors for implementation. On the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NESFAS, NESFAS funding for all students will continue while the academic year is underway. Even now, during the lockdown, NESFAS funding is continuing. We have not stopped it. The likely extension of the academic year will require additional funding to maintain allowances for students while they complete the academic year. As a department, we are therefore working with NESFAS in modeling these costs. Given the fact that all our universities have already dispersed learning materials allowances to their NESFAS-supported students, I would like to urge our students who have not as yet utilized their allowances to use these allowances to purchase appropriate electronic learning devices to support their learning during this time. This is, does not depart from the fact that we have decided that we are going to offer gadgets as and when they become available to all our NESFAS students. Specifically on universities, the 2020 academic year will be reorganized to enable all our institutions and their students to complete academic requirements 
With the prospects of extending into early 2021, depending on the epidemiology and impact of the COVID-19 pandemic threat. The completion of the academic year 2020 and the start of academic year 2021 will be aligned with the plans of the Department of Basic Education in terms of the completion cycle of the National Senior Certificate examinations and the, re and the release of those results, the metric results. Any plans to reopen universities for contact learning over coming months will necessarily have to be in line with the COVID-19 health and safety parameters, taking into account issues of physical distancing, biosafety, and other risks. As a result of highly uncertain and fluid social context, imposed by the viral threat on every aspect of South African society. It is not possible to determine with any measure of certainty the dates when physical return to campuses for the majority of our students will be possible. We want to underline this. Yes, we want to complete the academic year, but we must also save lives. We are not going to make reckless decisions just because there are those who are under pressure to say students must go back to institutions. We're not going to do that outside of the protocols of managing COVID-19. In this, we as a department are insisted we must be guided by science and what the health authorities say. We must not be guided by what seems to be politically correct feeling or populism. Because primary in the forefront, led by our president, our task is to save lives. Until we reach that point, every effort is now being made to put in place multiple and flexible methods of teaching and learning to support all our institutions and all our students. Within a national framework currently in place, each university will have to put plans in place to ensure its specific programs, resources, and capacity are adequate to offer various forms of remote and flexible learning from the beginning of June 2020 until a full return to contact teaching and learning is feasible. Our institutions will continue to offer training and support to academic staff and students in respect of the necessary technologies and mechanisms required to support teaching and learning. The Department of Higher Education and Training, assisted by the Center for Industrial and Scientific Research, is working on developing a geospatial model to map the levels and quality of connectivity, bandwidth and distribution of learning and co-learning centers in various districts throughout South Africa, including municipal and other private facilities that might be used by students during this period. In addition, CSIR is modeling the caring capacity of our universities and universities in the scenario where it would be safe to retain certain groups of students and within the National Common Council COVID-19 regulatory parameters. I have indeed mobilized both my departments to support these efforts. Once completed, this work should help us to better plan future normalization of activity on our campuses, whilst in the current period being able to access where appropriate decentralized learning facilities in various districts for study purposes. So funa zonki ndao, la haba fundi benga kwa zuktola kunu sizu. No mangabe guusema kaya, no mangabe guguupi, uguze skwazi kutisiba tole la bekona, 
uguze bagu wazu kubega nukufunda no As a department, we are aware that the COVID-19 pandemic has created new significant financial pressure on universities. One such aspect which incurred significant losses as a result of the lockdown is the stalled infrastructure projects on our various campuses, including student residences. I am pleased to say that in order to unblock this, government has made a provision for controlled relaxation to enable essential educational infrastructure projects to be resumed from the 1st of May, subject to adherence to strict health protocols. In the interim, we urge our universities to negotiate reduced liability terms with contractors. This also applies, by the way, to TVET colleges because we do have construction also of a number of TVET college campuses. On TVET colleges, for the technical and vocational education and training sector, the 2020 academic year will also be restructured in line with the continuity of the lockdown under Level 4 national protocols. This entails the need to restructure national examinations for the trimester, semester, and full year programs. To this end, our TVET colleges will have to reorganize the academic year to enable students to complete trimesters one and two for engineering studies, both semesters for business studies, and the full year NCV programs. Trimester three, which should have taken place from August to November 2020, will be deferred to a date to be determined after consultation with stakeholders. This is to ensure that students are adequately prepared for the examinations. A calendar detailing the commencement and end of classes, the exam sessions, as well as the short recess period will be released in due course. In acknowledgement of the fact that almost all Tivet College students do not have devices to work online, and furthermore, do not have access to data. Various other support initiatives have been explored to support students remotely while simultaneously working on acquiring devices for all NESFA students, including those in TVET colleges, and data as well. Radio and TV broadcasts have already begun in key subjects and are in the process of being expanded and will continue for six months. The use of textbooks, e-guides, past question papers, and uploaded YouTube videos are strongly advocated and supported through bulk SMSs from colleges and WhatsApp groups set up by lecturers. All these broadcasts and additional resources are available on the Department of Higher Education and Training website for ready and continuous access by students. On community education and training, which in the past was referred to as adult basic education and training, this sector also will resume teaching and learning in a staggered way in accordance with the revised academic calendar, which we will also release. Priority will be given to students doing the general education and training certificate, adult basic education and training, and the senior certificate in preparation for sitting for the October-November 2020 exams. The lower level classes of adult education and training, levels one to three, will resume on a later date aligned to the phasing in of grades in the school system. We have postponed the writing of community education and training May, June, general education and training certificate, adult basic education and training examinations, which were supposed to commence on the 20th of May, 2020. With all the candidates who were supposed to write the examinations to sit for their exams at the end of the year. To recoup the number of days lost during lockdown, the number of college holidays will be reduced for June and September, 2020. 
In this regard, a revised academic calendar will be issued to all community education and training colleges, indicating the increased number of tuition days. We will also engage with organized labor in the implementation of these measures. Given that the majority of centers operate from schools, our community education and training academic calendar will be aligned with that of the Department of Basic Education. In tandem with the resumption of teaching and learning, when, when it starts, I appeal to faith-based organizations, churches, traditional leaders, NGOs, and community leaders to be open to engagements with the department and the community education and training colleges on the utilization of, the, of their infrastructure for tuition in these colleges and also for purposes of examinations. The last matter that I would like to deal with is on skills development and training. Our sector education and training authorities, the CETAs, working with all the social partners, will ensure that during the months of May to June, learners are returning to the workplaces and training institutions in line with the gradual opening of those workplaces as per level four guidelines. In other words, as firms, factories, and other workplaces gradually open in terms of level four guidelines, so will the return also be staggered of trainees who have got workplace uh, learning to do. I have extended the due date for the submission of workplace skills plans, annual training reports by employers, which are normally submitted on 30 April every year, and I have extended the deadline to 31st of May 2020 in the light of the nationwide lockdown. I have issued a directive to all sitters to continue with the payment of learner stipends during the nationwide lockdown period. This is another important relief measure in terms of those trainees who are in learnerships or internships that at least they will get paid their stipends even during this month for this month when we have been having a lockdown. We are also implementing measures at Indlela. Indlela is our trade test center where we, where we run trade tests for artisans. We are implementing measures where our trade tests will be conducted at the main security entrance to limit the risk of infections to all those who are entering the premises in strict compliance with the COVID-19 protocols and requirements. We will also be announcing on an ongoing basis as to exactly what is happening on this front. In the same vein, the National Skills Fund will be engaging the public and private skills development providers on the dates and modalities of resuming learning and teaching as soon as such decisions are made. As a department, following a request by Nehau, one of our trade unions, and working together with them, the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, as well as the Health and Welfare and the ETDP CETAs, we are developing a concrete plan on the training of various categories of frontline workers, particularly those working in our health facilities and other industries as part of the COVID-19 awareness campaign. We appreciate this role of the CETAs to provide training in support of the management of COVID-19. In this regard, I'm happy to announce that funding has been set aside for the training of almost 18,000 frontline health workers, the leadership and membership of trade unions, the shop stewards, and other workers who are dealing with occupational safety and health within the context of COVID-19. This training will take the form of information sharing sessions as well as technical sessions targeted at the above mentioned groups. All these sessions will be online to ensure maximum coverage and reach. The training will also cover workers on night duty. In addition, and working with the department 
of social development, I'm pleased also to point out that 1,210 unemployed social workers will be recruited and placed on a 12-month internship to work with our communities to tackle social distress and other psychosocial challenges facing households and communities during this difficult period. In conclusion, the extraordinary measures that we are announcing today to ensure a contingency plan is in place during phase four lockdown have been enriched by the extraordinary contributions received from many South Africans, including our sector stakeholders, which includes the universities, South Africa, the South African Principals Organization for TVET Colleges, the South African Union of Students, the trade union movement, student political formations, political parties, religious formations, and non-governmental organizations, academics, and scientists. We also have a ministerial task team representing most of these stakeholders that has been dealing with and is dealing with COVID-19 management, chaired by our Deputy Minister, Budiman Amel. We pay tribute and appreciate the role of all these stakeholders. I would like to thank all of them. Your inputs as stakeholders has been very valuable to us and South Africa in general. What we are announcing today is largely guided by the understanding and the agreements that we have reached together. As a ministry and a department, we'll be constantly communicating with all our stakeholders on an ongoing basis and also communicating with the entire nation through multiple platforms of communication on any developments within the sector so that no one remains unclear as to what the post-school education and training system will be doing during this. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tim. Without any further ado, we'll call upon the Minister of Basic Education to come and speak to us. Minister Mtsar. Thank you very much, Program Director, uh, Minister Mtembu. Also acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Nzimande and our Deputy Ministers and also thank members of the media for your presence. So program director, we agree with higher education that in the past few weeks, as South Africans, but also as a department of basic education, have experienced major problems. And as a result, there has been an increase in anxiety, understandably so, because as a sector's basic education, we serve more than 13 million learners, so which means we are present in every household, or most households. 12.4 million are in the public sector, about 600,000 in private schools. So the anxiety is highly under understandable. And members of the committee have been very worried about the status of schooling and when are learners going to be allowed back, if indeed they are allowed back. So yesterday and this morning, the National, Con <coughs> National Cor Coronavirus Command Council considered both reports of basic education and higher education in the context of COVID-19. And we can report that as a sector, since we closed schools on the 26th of March, We've had more than almost 50 
consultations with different stakeholders. And in each meeting, we were deliberating, deliberating on the future of basic education following the COVID-19 induced national state of disaster. And the main principles that have been guiding us in this engagement were first ensuring that as a sector, we contribute towards the lowering of infections so that we don't contribute towards infections. We also ensure the safety of our learners and our educators, but also we balance that around protecting the academic year of 2020 as much as possible. And at all times during the consultations, we did start our conversation about the safety of learners, the safety of teachers, and the safety of our employees. Yes, indeed, we made safety a priority in all our engagements. And I can say, Chair, that we had consultations, very fruitful consultations with all teacher unions in the sector, Satu, Naptosa, South Africans on the Revesa, INI, NATU, and PEO. We also met with the Association of Special Education. We met with Education Management Association of South Africa, IMASA. We also engaged with South African principal associations. We also, more importantly, also engaged with all the governing bodies, your FEDSAS, NSGB, the Governing Alliance, and, <coughs> and all the other uh, as associations that are active in the education sector. We also had engagements with the IEB because indeed we had to relook at our plans with them. We had consultation with National Alliance of Independent Schools Associations. We also had <coughs> engagement with South African Comprehensive Institute, SAICA, and different faith-based organizations. As I said, we consulted Uma Lucy also as our examining body with the Education Labor Relations Council, with the South African Council of Educators, with Education and Development Practice Sectors in Education, which is the EDTP. And through the NECT, we're very privileged to also have consultations with many organizations that are involved in the education space. We had a teleconference, which include more than 77 members or leaders of about 200 organizations involved in education. And as I said, at all these meetings, the principle of opening schools at the right time was accepted once all conditions have been met. All sectors indicated what are the conditionalities which were accepted. Teacher unions made submissions to say what is it that they will really support to, to, to support their members to go back to work. Parents also gave us advice about what are the conditionalities that will really make them support our work. But the bottom line is, in all these consultations, the principle of opening schools at the right time was accepted once all conditions were met. There were a number of proposals which I can't go through. I think we'll make, we'll release them, uh, DG, in our website. That there were proposals around community and town halls. And we'll release the statement that we presented to the, to the NCC today because what would have happened, which created some difficulties for us, we used the same document to consult all stakeholders. We didn't change the do document mainstream. And I think it led to some misunderstanding that we had not considered what people gave to us. Whereas we had to finish the whole process of consultation, then consolidate the report, incorporating all the suggestions that have been brought forward. Just hold it. I'm told that uh, we have lost transmission. Uh, if we can have a sense, when did we lose so that we start where we lost? Are we back now? But when when did we lose it? It didn't say. They are back now. Continue. Okay. So all our partners 
requested that the department should, product, should provide personal protection equipment. And again, in the full report, we indicate that we will indeed provide like face masks to all the learners in all the uh, 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 categories from quintile one to five. They also insisted that we have to make sure that we provide awareness campaign to parents in particular and agreed on the proposal that the opening should not be a one uh, sweep opening. So I know parents were very worried that uh, we said on the fourth, there are seven year olds will go to school. We never said that. We said we'll have a phase approach when conditions are ready. So we never said people will be there to say, what if this, my seven year old loses a mask? We also want to report again, it's contained in a report the work that we did since we locked, since the, uh, the closing of schools, not necessarily the lockdown, and even during the lockdown, to make sure that indeed we keep education going. And we have to express our grateful to our partners with the, of the Department of Basic Education. We partnered with different, with 123 radio stations, with six different television channels, and in total, <coughs> those channels reach about 35 million people. And the initiative was ready to put in place an intervention to bring curriculum lessons to households across the country to assist learners as school remained closed. This was in B to minimize the impact of coronavirus on basic education. In addition to the 13 radio stations of the SABC, which broadcast in all official languages, we had 110 community radio stations that were also involved in carrying curriculum contents on a daily basis. In addition, there were learner support programs which were aimed again at limiting the impact of the lockdown to the school calendar. And these initiatives are part of the broader efforts to prevent a total loss of school year since the lockdown was announced by the president. The radio lessons broadcast do provide curriculum support lessons in various grades, including ECD. And some of the subjects which are covered include maths, physical science, English foreign first additional language, life sciences, accounting. And there's a variety of African languages were also covered under the ECD basket. And learners were encouraged to check their local listings to the exact slots for radio. We also made available resources online for those who could access such online resources. And we really want to sincerely appreciate the ongoing contribution by our partners for the zero rated platforms which carry curriculum content for the use in the current situation of the lockdown. We also want to acknowledge that all these efforts are not perfect because we have assessed and we're working also with schools that have been using ICTs to teach to say what is the impact to us of the impact of teaching through ICTs, also the impact also of these services that we have been using. And we can say, unfortunately, that not all learners, very few learners are rich, and even those are rich, schools tell us the impact is less than 20% of what would have happened in the classroom, which makes our point that we are saying, our strength as a sector, if we have to save the year, our strength is in the classroom. Anything else will not be able to assist us to a very large extent. Amongst other decisions we took, like higher education, we had to postpone the May-June exams, and the 350,000 learners that were supposed to start on the 4th of May will now be part of the December exam. So due to the Lockdown, we are unable to complete our preparations, which include the printing and distribution of question papers, the appointment of invigilators, markers, and the general readiness in marking centers. So the examinations that were supposed to start on the 4th of May, of May will be matched with the November examinations. And the new timetable will be met, will, 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 for the match exams will be communicated uh, as soon as possible. And this postponement of exams led us to the biggest 
number of learners ever seen in the country to sit for metric exams at the same time. The highest we once had, uh, Minister, in terms was 800,000. But with this postponement, we've exceeded a million. So it means it changes completely our planning processes. And members will also be aware that during the lockdown, we've had to postpone all our enrichment programs, your spelling B, your school co music competitions, and all sporting activities, including school trips. We really want to pay also attention to, to the question of school fees because it has been arising to a very large extent. As CM, we did take note of the concern regarding the issue of school fees. And we did indicate that from the start that school fees are payable. Where children attend fee-paying schools, we really request parents to help pay schools because these funds are normally used to pay the salaries of your school governing body appointed teachers, so they don't get money from government. And it was agreed that provinces will work with these schools to find an amicable but implementable solution. In the meantime, we continue to urge our parents to continue paying school fees, and if they cannot, they should make arrangements with the schools so that we can relieve the pressure on schools. As I said, since, since we've been working on a recovery program, in the past weeks, we've had work streams that constitute of our professionals, constitute of our experts in the, in the field or in the areas of work, but also experts from provinces. And we have been working on different tentative dates depending as to when, as a sector, we are ready and when, as a sector, the National Coronavirus Command Team gives us a nod. So each province, district, and school, we've agreed must, that they must have practical and comprehensive plans, and the plans must always talk to risk profiles in the areas in which schools are located, because different areas have got different risk profiles. As much as parents said, don't separate our children too much and say there's this program for this community, there's this program for this community. But also we are aware that there are areas where the virus is severe, it's an epicenter, and therefore the measures are going to have to be different. And the decisions that were taken or that have been taken around the, 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 the recovery plan are based on scientific considerations. So last night it was Muteha and Mahaulia, this. It's not us, it's we've been consulting We've been advised by the national job team. We've been also advised by health, but also experts in the, set, in, in the sector. And amongst other things that we've been advised was to adopt, and which we have agreed also with the sectors that we have spoken to, that we must adopt a phased approach. So again, uh, Minister Tim, the, the I think the concern that when we open, it will be 13 million of kids on the street. It's not even part of what we are proposing. Because uppermost in our planning is the health and safety of school communities. As I say, particularly our learners, our teachers, and the general staff working in schools. We have already as a sector developed what we call standard operating procedures for the containment and management of COVID-19. So as part of our preparations, among other things, we have developed standard operating procedures on the containment and management of coronavirus for different institutions in terms of what the phasing plan and approval by cabinet and the net job is going to be. And these standard operating procedures have been developed in consultation with health. They provide guidelines for all administrators step by step on how to prevent the spread manage the environment, and manage codif uh, uh, infections. We have guidance again for childcare facilities on preventing the spread of coronavirus, the role of facilities and schools, the management procedures for hygiene, how we're going to manage absenteeism around transport, about closure of, uh, of units, offices, or departments if there's a problem, but also on how to clean educational institutions. 
and the pillar of our plan has is based on the guidance that we've been getting from health. For instance, we are proposing that there won't be, I mean, there are obvious things that have been said or even indicated by World Health. Amongst others, we're saying there should be no learners sharing a desk, there should be no hugging, and we have spelled all of them out. One of the key concerns was infrastructure, and we're not, we're, we're, we're cognizant of the challenges that we have around I I I infrastructure. But amongst others, that we have put as conditions that classes will be sanitized every day before classes start. Learners' hands will be sanitized as when they enter classroom. There will be limit limitations of movements between learners. There will be no clustering of desks. There are also guidelines around transport. We are working with the Department of Transport. And also, as a sector, we are working on the remedial programs that pro, pro, problems that we know sector. the one which is really outstanding is shortages of classrooms but also the provision of water tanks and the, the provision of water and proper sanitations again these are the conditions which are going to determine our phasing in so we won't phase in any school any school which has limited uh, or has challenges around water and allow to, 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 to open. At the sector, we've also ordered basic hygiene and sanitation packages. We also have, as I said, put in place different risk reduction methods around school classes, to uh, 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 classrooms and toilets, bathrooms, offices. And also about food preparations, because also the, the new guidelines about what should happen in the school nutrition program, about the daily duties of, clean, of cleaners. We've agreed to this network that we have to increase cleaners in our schools to make sure that indeed they're kept clean. There are also programs, proposals around screening that learners and teachers will be screened on a daily basis. And if they have raised temperatures, we'll be working with health in terms of isolation and testing. So again, the plan requires us, as we got from, as we discussed in the National Council of uh, uh, Control Council, that all these plans have to be subjected to verification or approval by the depart departments of health but also on partnerships with them to say, if we detect that a child, for instance, has a raised temperature, immediately how do we respond? So we have to align also our systems as departments and as government. Same with the Department of Transport. If they come across learners who are in privately organized transport by parents and they're on the back of a, of, of, of a van, what is it that needs to happen? Again, in preparing for the protection of the year, we've also had a work stream looking on the curriculum recovery framework. And I won't get into it, but amongst other things, we've agreed that there must be, on the life orientation, there must be more information on COVID-19 to make sure that our children understand what is happening, on inclusion and equality, on a targeted approach, on size and scope, and we can confidently say, because some people are concerned to say if a child has been infected with corona, kids will call him corona. We've had to deal with AIDS in our system. Yeah. And we've managed to contain even stigmatization, and we think we'll use those skills and those expertise. Because it's not the first time that we're dealing with a situation where there could be stigmatization. But more important is also to up our game around partnerships with the NGOs that we work with, but with different stakeholders and more important uh, parents and educators. And educators themselves in the consultation have offered to sit on our uh, committee that is going to ensure that we, mark, we tick all the boxes. So they've also offered their resources and their expertise to make sure that indeed we can have a codif compliant environment. We are also aware that uh, the disease has brought quite a number of problems, 
your psychosocial, your mental problems, and again, working with health, but using our own in the main expertise and skills, we are also gearing ourselves to get to that. Now on the matter, I guess the people say, Uchoni, Magazig Linda, Ebesimfunang, Ibsugbong, Eogti, the school calendar. So I really, but we make you work us so to Riskela Uskabali pause. The original school calendar, which we gazette, gazetted legally by law, opened schools in 15th January 2020 and it ended up on the 4th of December. That's a legal instrument. We then had to, with all this disruption, consider a different calendar which we'll have to gazet when you are ready. And in the proposed calendar, proposed calendar, because on my own I can't decide unless the NCC says yes, you can proceed. But this is a proposed calendar that we're consulting around. So we were proposing that on the 4th of May, next week, Monday, the sector opens. And we never said kids must go back to school unless not a static. Because the questions that people are asking us are, 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 are correct questions. We don't have not received the mask. Is there something? It has not happened. Have teachers been oriented? No, it has not happened. But for us to be ready, we need to open the sector so that the first group of officials go in and prepare all the things that people are raising as concerns and very legitimate concerns. So we are just on the same page. We have the equal thinking capacity like yourselves, concerns and considerations. So, but I repeat that way. Kerekadi fo, hariri bana ba eskolu. Kadi fo, reketa pili yali fapa. Ekale huya msebeti hur itlo luki seza. Hubulo hadi kolo kana ko eot la beri dumela ningayona. So that's where the fourth came in. So he pinned nge fo seed. A seed about our zali ba kade ba washa ma uniform ba be ready. Sizo vula bantu ana ba eza a a be ez nge fo. Therefore, Kuzos are the first team, for instance, what DB Ixos Amina, Nama TDG, Sipegi Curriculum Busha, Sipegi Plan Z to Busha, Sikale Ugulungi Sela, Ugula is gone. Whether it's Vulang or September, but what I find is called Ugulungi. So Scala Nge Four. So Xo Iki Timbalo Kala Nge Four. Gubenama, so it will be your senior officials, because they even have to come and receive. Must order Rama Maskas of Figilagban. Must order a sanitation as of Figuela Guban. Must order a mat desk as of one another man's city. So I found that Tolu Mundo as of Figuela Guye. So that's why we say, Gadi for the center is in Bana. Let's go. The province did a short Kibo Mamba Tang. The national department has a little Tiji Rutlaman. Rutla Tiji, na deputy minister, did the DDG fail. Gadi 80. Hutlota brought management were less than 50. Njalon Jalo, until such time we have met the sector coronavirus friend. And then we are proposing that GAD 11 Hutla school management teams that would have been prepared by the first team that goes in. GAD 18, we start receiving teachers. We would have worked with teacher unions because we have agreed with them that we will not, they have given us conditionalities. And we need at least two weeks to be able, or three weeks to meet those conditions. So I say from the 18th, the teachers have to come in and prepare on the proposed date. And we are proposing, as we said repeatedly, that we will face grades. Okchugut a high school, and about 1,500. So in the space, spacing none doesn't arise because we should have the whole school to themselves. So in the space, none have the whole school to themselves. Langa so tota mu kodwa mabeza ngalilanga sibaze ngalo boza bodwa Same thing in the primary schools when we say grade 7s have to come they'll have the whole school to themselves they'll have the whole teacher cohort to themselves and we will only face in the other grades 
as and when we are prepared. So, Owa manje for the whole of May, Slung, say number seven, number 12. But, Sikala nge for, nge for uglungis. Now, Renklumi kibi the hand because that's what has been really uh, making uh, people hot under the collar. That's why I thought with my music and nan gang running I was not used to Abansa and I couldn't do Abansa because Sia Vumelan, Zonk in Dobas Kuma, Sivumelan, and as I could fit a sea piggy side. Near forces I be seen a corridor, Ugam Gelabanto and his gold win. God was sitting in young or younger, Ukalang for Uglung said to be busy. Well, uh -uh, we have considered it in our planning. And the main aim, as I said, with all the humility, Minister Mted, is to make sure that as the education sector, we don't contribute at all in the spread of the virus. That's why some are when they show good, we are safe. But on the other hand, we also say we have to protect the academic year. And that's why it's for the market. I don't know what to do. It's a paper that will test like this. It's a little bit of a deal. It's a little bit of a So it's the internal grades that we are working with provinces to say, let's assess them depending on when we, 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 we open on the percentage of the work that they would have done this year. Interesting as we as a football as I was able to ask you what the pass one pass all you know back on I'm going to pin the class you pass one pass all you know back on yeah but I will create the land they like one other one way or the other the internal grids so I'm going to take we're going to take the work that we are not going to assess this year and integrate it in 2021 so that U2020 or 2021, the curriculum will be really worked together so that again they don't lose. But I really be failing my duty if I don't express my deep concern about what is happening in our schools when the lockdown was imposed. Different provinces have reported that 962 schools have been vandalized in almost all our districts. There have been, there's been theft, vandalism, so that the best place to go to the city in this middle corona can so to say any goal. There have been incidents of vandalism, of baclaris, baclaris taking place all over. Our ICT equipment is going. The food that we left abruptly has been, uh, has been stolen. And Umlazi, for instance, has been the worst hit with 41 schools affected just as a district. And we say we're extremely concerned by this level of criminality and are really appealing to committees. And I have to thank my colleagues, Minister Twele, for assisting us as much as possible in this crisis. So I want to conclude saying it could mean that by EFO. As in this is a good EFO, I see a school win. Kuya, Abase, Benzi. Bayenzani, Bayolung, Sela, Abandwana, Uutibeze, Mabeza. Oxem Kogan, Joba Sisho, Esbege Pambin. Kuse, it's the safety of our children, the safety of our workers, but also balancing that with protecting the academic year 2020. And a logong egasi reads a cabo shaswa, Rikeke Rayeza, Kaosho, Kakele, Lortaeza, Kama Hete, Amak Alu, Atla Zanghori. So Impasse 
kuri thusa ho re sebetsane mmoho le healthy ho re dikolo di khone bulo so i really want to ensure our stakeholders that the implementation plans are informed by three principles not spreading the virus not endangering the lives of our educators learners and workers but also protecting the so that's the balance we're trying to seek and as I say, the phase in is, is monitored. It has to get an approval of cabinet. What we have been doing with the documents that we either leaked or published, and we will uh, put so that And as I say, the phase in is, is monitored. It has to get an approval of cabinet. What we have been doing with the documents that we either leaked or published, and we will uh, put so that, for instance, the Council of, of Learners with Special Needs, or in, in particular, DEFSA said, no, your mask covering mouths doesn't work for us as a sector. Please make sure that you have your see through mask. And it has been very helpful. Uh, ready in areas where we had the blind spots. We've also agreed that we will establish COVID-19 control teams in every province, in every district, in every circuit, in every school. So that parents are represented or the council, teachers are represented, officials are represented to make sure that everything, we, we tick all the boxes. We also think we'll have to intensify our communication so that we don't find ourselves uh, misunderstood, I think, or misquoted or misread uh, the way I think we really had poorly communicated in the past few days that what we presented at the portfolio committee was a consultation document, not a decision. A decision about what is going to happen finally is going to come from cabinet. We're having a document through which we're consulting and getting people's views. And the other area we misunderstood also is whether we have not taken to consideration all the proposals. They are there. And they are forming part of the plan that we are working on in the month of May in preparing for the opening of schools. So I want to thank our partners. And it is a view that I think from this crisis we are gaining a lot. We are gaining lessons about ICTs and are learning or are finding ourselves forced to do things differently. We've been using ICTs to support classrooms, not ICTs to, 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 be, to, to be teaching tools. But it's quite clear, moving forward, we have to re-engineer our, our processes. And we believe that with collaborative effort, with partnership, we can and will overcome our, our difficulties. And we appeal to each one of us to work to cooperate and ensure that we put the interest of our children, our educators, and our work, workers a top pri priority, bearing in mind that as a sector, we have to make sure that at all costs, in whatever we do, we are not going to be responsible for the spreading of the virus. And we are taking counsel, advice, and information from all sectors, from researchers, from experts, and all other people, including just ordinary parents, on what they think should happen. So, Minister Nyabong. This NG was there. Men of our friends, has been very. 
script director. So without any further ado, again, we will then get to questions. Now, Sis Angie and Umpepet, you have not been here for some time. We, uh, we have now gone virtual. Uh, you will hear people asking you questions. Uh, others will just send us their questions through We are connecting with all journalists for others as well. So, we will start with our WhatsApp team. Do we have questions now? Yes, Minister, we have. We also have questions that to the minister of from the Sunday Times um, and she has two questions. The first one is, in terms of the procurement of laptops, the minister mentioned that um, if you're worried about the coronavirus and if you're worried about your finances The fourth question is from T.D. Madia from News24. What plans have been put in place for clinical students who have practical subjects such as, as part of their core curriculum, such as nursing students? Can you say that again, sorry? What plans have been put in place for clinical students who have practical subjects as part of their core curriculum, such as nursing students? And the last question is from Precious of Opera News. What plans are in place for students to collect their personal items from campuses before the deep cleaning of campuses commence? You, you, you have spoken to five questions that are directed to oh, Minister Zimande. Do we have questions? that are directed to the Minister of Basic Education. I want, I want to take them so that as he answers his questions, she is also putting her mind to the other questions. Maybe whilst we are waiting, let's get to those that are calling in. Thank you very much, Minister. The first caller that we have is Ms. Shengu from Sunday to Times. Shengu, you are through. Mshengu, are you there? Yeah, we go I'll Baba. Spirit, I'll show you Baba. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. No, okay. Just, just go on. You can ask your question, Mshengu. All right, but uh, I've got... Uh, let me start with uh, Minister uh, Jimmy Chaka. Uh, Minister, on, on the issue of... Uh, you spoke about... There will be no part one, part all. Does that apply only to grade seven and grade twelve, or does it does that apply across board? And why why would you say that if other systems have been applied before? I mean, we could have made an example about 
2007, and was, was that uh, Mongols a public service in the, in the education center, where by at the end of the year, the Southern platform was applied, particularly in the case of Metro in Southern, that being uh, the other case outside A7 and A12. Secondly, on the payment, on the continued payment of uh, schools, in, in the particular private schools, my question is, uh, government, why is it that uh, we are not uh, introducing payment holidays as it has been done in other uh, issues? What is so special in this particular regard? Because even if kids do study online, it cannot be that it's the same as they go to school. That question also applies to the as demand in the higher education sector because if studying virtually or online is not the same as them being physically uh, uh, available at the uh, university where uh, they, they would have use of a library and a uh, uh, different laboratory that by putting the tuition fees higher. Is there a discussion around a reduction of tuition fees for school fees at the basic education level or a training holiday, especially given that a lot of parents also lost jobs in this particular country? Thank you, Mr. If if we have not heard you properly, we had a problem with the volume, particularly in your first question. Uh, if we have not heard you properly, we might come back to you. Can we get to the second caller? Thank you, sir. The second caller is Martin from Randburg. We Martin. Martin, we are listening. I think there's a problem with the uh, connectivity. We, we, do we have a third person on the line, isn't it? Most definitely, yes. Uh, we have Bonga from EWN. Bonga, you are through? Hello? Okay, who's speaking now? Hi, Minister. It's Bonga Tulane from EWN. Uh, uh, go ahead, Bonga. Bonga. Uh, my name is from Minister Zimande, also Minister Mateja. Minister Zimande, when you say the academic year will remodel and might even go into 2021, does that mean we can expect that the government will try to rush in 2021 academic year over the... I don't know what happened to you there, Bonga, but it looks like we, we, we lost you. Uh, is it there? Okay. Now, we, we, we will come back to, to, to the colleague who's assisting us. Let's take two questions for U Minister uh, Mutsaka, if you have them from our WhatsApp group. Uh, yes, Minister. The first one is from Sophie McGuinness from the SABC, and she says the world help the the World Health Organization has recommended that people with health challenges and those above 60 are vulnerable. How do you plan to deal with this? Is this not going to affect the staff component um, in the sector? The next question is from Kyla from BBC News. What does, the what does the minister believe might be the reason behind the spike in attacks on schools during the lockdown? And are you and are we and and what are the department's plans to repair these schools? When will they be repaired? And can I just squeeze in one last question? Okay. Thank you, Minister. Um, and then there's a clarity-seeking question uh, from Vikas Berger from Netwerk Firentwandach is asking um, for the minister to confirm whether grade seven and 12 peoples will be back at school as of the 1st of June, and should the school calendar that was approved by, this, by the NCC still need to be approved by Cabinet as well? We will start with uh, Minister Nzimande. You have had enough time mm -hmm. to ponder over those questions. Pepet. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Minister Tim, and thanks for the for the questions. Maybe let me start with the clinical training students. Uh, we're going to be starting immediately with those who are doing their final years. By clinical training, it's doctors, I think, and other health professionals who have got to do 
that would include nursing, I guess. But we have, here we are guided by the deans of medicine and the Department of Health. We are not doing this on our own. We dare not do so. It was at the request of the deans, for instance, that the final year students be allowed to return because they are part of the health sector. Your final year is in a hospital or a clinic or some other health facility doing practical work. We need more hands, we need more uh, health practitioners uh, at this point in time. The other years that also require some part of clinical training, but which are not final, will be phased in as we move, hopefully, to lower levels in terms of COVID-19 management levels. I hope that is, that is clear. Let me also clarify this thing of laptops. At the moment, if we're counting all NESFA students, we are talking about 730,000. We have already started exploring. We might not have any single source that may be able to, even quite a number of them, to give this to us one time which means that we will actually have to phase it in as we are able to get it. Because we are even told, by the way, even a place like China doesn't as yet have that capacity because they themselves, they've been, they are coming out of a lockdown. But our commitment is that we will do so. The issue of the missing middle is an important one because we are indeed concerned. That is why I promised at the beginning of the year that I want to investigate a possibility of a way of assisting missing middle students with affordable loans. That's what it would be. It would have to involve the banks and so on. For me, no student should be able not to acquire some form of money. If it's NESFAS, yes, it's NESFAS, but missing middle, no student should not be able to go to a facility where they can be able to be loaned money at an affordable rate, which they can be able to pay once they work. I'm still committed to work at that, even on this issue of, of gadgets, the laptops. I, I want to have a discussion with the universities, as well as others, as to how do we also assist those missing middle students who cannot afford to have that. It's just that we are not as definite as with the NESFAS, but we are looking into that. It's a matter that is of concern to us. Even if we can go begging to good Samaritans to say, come donate a laptop here or there, so that no one must be left behind. I must say, by the way, some universities have started doing that. Those who have got some better resources, they have started not just giving NESFA students, but even some of the missing middle students. But that depends. We appreciate that. They mustn't say then, therefore, we are putting more pressure on them. Look, you know this issue of some institutions who have started with online learning already? We share the same concerns that no student should be left behind. But what do we mean by that? Let's be clear. You know, when I said in my opening, I'm, I'm sure maybe people did not notice that much, when I said we are constrained by the very same problems we want to address. We have an unequal South African society. There are students who come from better off families. They are likely to have lots of advantages. It's not something we celebrate. But the most important thing for us is that by the time we finish the academic year, not a single student may must be left behind, even if some may not start at the same time. We debated and agonized over this and said, no, let's not stop those universities who have started. Rather, let's work between now and the 1st of June such that by the beginning of June, we are able to resume academic activities for the rest of the students, irrespective of where they are, whether they have got laptops or connectivity or not. 
We might not be able to do it in exactly the same way. Because we want to be fair also here and be honest. We discover that in our 26 universities, 14 are going to battle. Four of them, not that bad, but 10 are really in a bad situation. They need assistance. That's what we'll be working on. Because we inherited an unequal society. We're not celebrating it. We don't like it. But it's a fact. The fact that then you may have different institutions or students starting at different times does not depart from our commitment. No student will be left behind at the end of the day. Now, this relates to when do we finish the academic year. You know, we want to also say to our people and all our stakeholders, of course, all South Africans, no one can claim to have experience of what we are facing on how to deal with what we are facing. We are all new. The Chinese put it nicely, and I think they might have stolen this from some African sayings. If you're crossing a river on foot, you, you normally look for the part of the river that has got stones, in other words, not deep. And then usually you use a stick to touch first with a stick the next stone so that you know where you put your next foot. And you continue that way. We are not going anywhere. No one, we can't claim as government that we have experience on this. We have never had. That is why we consult, as also Minister Motsekha was, was saying, and, and Minister Mtem, so that we are able to, to actually work together. So that is important to understand. We're committing to say no one will be left behind. So we might not finish the academic year for everybody by, by, by November or early December. We might finish in February for some and in March, if that is going to ensure that no one gets left behind. We are hoping it won't be later than April, the latest, if we happen to finish next year. But who knows? Who knows? We can plan and do everything. It's how the virus behaves. Those are our plans now. And as we have committed, we'll be communicating all the time and we will be consulting so that, and we even have a structure that is led by our deputy minister. So then this would apply to rural students. We, we are committing now and we've committed with all the institutions. We can't just use online, even online, by the way. Minister Motsakha was saying this thing as well. There's no full-blown online education that is there in South Africa. There isn't. It, it's a means of just supporting. You know, there isn't a full-blown thing that we can say has online effectively replaced contact, teaching, and learning. So it's one method. What we are committing to is that we will do all we can to reach out and to make material to reach out to rural areas, even to students who do not have. We have experience with UNISA, for instance. We'll be engaging UNISA. UNISA, how have you been doing this with the post office and so on? The other way is to say, if we can't do that, we identify libraries and municipal offices in different districts to say students at least can go there. If they go there, they will be able to access A or B or C. So we are prepared to do that. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough, but we are determined because we don't want a single student to be, to be left behind. On the issue of registration of cell phones, no. But whenever you register in a TVET college or university, you, you get asked your details, including your phone. All what we are saying, please make sure that your phone numbers are there. And also, don't chop and change all the time. Because that frustrates us. By the way, there are students now who do not get their NS first because we can't locate them because they've changed their cell phone numbers. We can't be able to reach them easily. That is all what we are saying. I want to say, by the way, Mvelasa also, we now have virtually all the cell phone numbers of Tivet College students. I think it's only three colleges that we don't have. For the 47 of them, we have all their cell phone numbers. 
We want the same with, our, with the universities as well, so that we are able to be in touch with our students and in, in also this fight we are fighting for data. Data uh, I've, I've already dealt with uh, uh, clinical training students. Now, this is a difficult one. I know I'm getting lots of Facebook messages. We left ours closed and at university when we left. Hey, it's difficult, Nganizagwit, we must be honest. Because if we are still with this lockdown and we are committed to saving lives and we are saying no interprovincial travel, except under certain conditions. Unfortunately, we can't allow students to go and fetch clothes or whatever else they might have left at university until we open, until we start doing so. Because once you start doing that, how do you control it? And I must, people must just know, agathegi umongamele. Agathegi. He wants that we do things according to the rule. And as ministers, we have to toe the line. No matter how sympathetic we can be, we can't say, well, today, and we don't even know how many students. We sympathize with you, but we cannot allow that. Learning materials, as we have said, we will do our best to deliver the, 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 the learning material. It's not our intention to go into 2021, but given the challenges we have, we will have to go to 2021, hoping that it will not take the whole of 2021, a little bit of 2021, to make sure that no one is left behind. That's our commitment. No one... No student, no institution will be left behind. That's the commitment we make. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Namum Chairman Zwanga got to go to Tim Sambi, because. He's saying there's always been a pass one, pass all. A uh, pass one, pass all. Uh, kids were promoted to one. It's never happened. See, condona into a balil. So, mong a balang a call condonation. We condona on the basis of what you would have written. NSCT. We have trimmed the curriculum with the internal grades to make sure that we deal with the fundamentals which allow children to study the next grade. For instance, in maths, if you have not learned other concepts, it's going to be difficult to move forward. So the curriculum teams have really looked at that. And if the key topics that are left are going to be integrated to the next day. We taught fully term one. So values excellent two days. So term one is a simple thing. What we have lost up to now it's term two, which started in April after Easter, Ipelang or June. But we are saying, if we are not able to open even until the end of June, as God was some conditionality, so July. So it means we'll have two terms remaining, and uzo assessor, na logo sik fundi slin the remaining term. If we've taught fifty percent, we are going to be assessed on fifty percent. If we've been able to save 75 percent, we are going to be assessed on 75 percent. What we also don't want to do is to put learners and schools on, under pressure to save my internal grades utata wong. It's just that I'm up grade 12. Yibo wa geba zongena kui pressure kwa mbazo za nangimika beli wapsugu wa yiga my camp because wana young, all the things that uh, have to be examined, they're going to be exam examined. There was also the issue about online virtual learning we have also in the department 
a team of researchers from different universities were helping us because some of the work that we we're going to do around research on, for instance, your reading programs, we're unable to do them now. So they're helping us to scout out what are the experiences internationally and also what are the impacts of the programs that we've put in place, where we have put all these programs with SABC and radios, what, they, what they're doing studies on an ongoing basis. But they're also interacting with schools which have been using uh, uh, ICTs to say what is the impact. And the results are, yes, indeed, we kept the home fires burning, but the strength is in the classroom. Because even those that schools have been able to access them through computers and ICTs, schools say they are not reaching more than 30 percent of what would have been reached in the classroom. So we're not saying it's a lost case, but as I said earlier, Chair, currently outside Codiv, COVID-19, COVID-19, <laughs> outside COVID-19, <laughs> COVID, so Outside COVID-19, we were deploying ICTs to support what is happening in the classrooms. So it's a complete different pedagogy that we're talking about. And we are learning and how we can do things out. So I've spoken about trimming of the curriculum to keep identified that that's what the work stream has done. Identify your fund, your, your identified basic concepts and said in the remain, even if we are September, by Kalo Mamad Bafuno Tabo was a massac shoes. No one are waiting with September, so by testing it was even from September. So the curriculum is really looking at different case scenarios, but we've worked out, but Upalage was born in the Bazos. So Banga Saliga could Bazos, Abazo Palace, Sabesba Funsayon, Nadis Catababuyanga Suscolin. So Fimukwena also wants us to talk about the underlying about age. It's part of the considerations in the plan. We've discussed that with provinces, and provinces have identified that there are some key, key, key uh, senior people in departments that they can't, without risking falling apart, they can't release now. So those are key uh, uh, senior managers with specialized skills, and we'll have to work out how they work in a way that is code compliant. There are also an major issues about both learners and educators, even outside 60, 60 years, who have underlying diseases. We've discussed with unions how we manage that, how we manage it in a way that ensures that we can keep confidentiality of the information that they present to us about their health conditions and work case by case how we do it. We've also agreed that we will only work on the basis of medical uh, 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 evidence from doctors. In terms of learners, we want parents to declare upfront, to say, well, Mundana, we asthma, and then we work out with the parents. So those are issues that, <coughs> that are part of the plan that we have to sort out during this month of, 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 of May. On attacks of schools, from the different cases and reports, it's different reasons from criminality to, I don't know. In some instances, you could see the target was your ICTs. In some instances, kitchens were attacked. That is the food supplies that we had left when we were forced to close. I'm sure ukulanji mental diseases, but it's different reasons, and we're not able to pin it down to say, but some people were saying it's people in the construction industry, they want us to come in, to, they want to come and repair schools. Some of the people you've arrested, it has nothing to do with anything. And that's one of the reasons, uh, I think, when we're discussing today at the end, the national command team, that that's the other reason that we think if we begin to bring life in schools. People be kabe bona go deliver ma soche nge na iso letama whatever we are working with the defense, with the 
defense department to help us build classes, to do all sorts of things. They respect the schools. Now for them, I think they feel like graves and they come to lines and they do a full night. But we really think opening might help. In terms of what we are going to do with them, so that's why we have to that's why I find the CM7 is in Ukalangi 4, so that we can assess the level of damage and can develop plans. Because outside, see, we lock down, even with senior managers, no principal, basic high, there's no way we're going to be able to assess and develop plans. So those plans are going to be informed by us going there. The question, there was also a question about the proposed calendar. The proposed calendars we said, Guti, Kamanda, the senior official DI, Gadi six, Hutlaba Latelang, Gadi eleven, Hutlaba Bang, Matisher, Hai Banyani, recorded compliant, Akala Hutlam Sebetin, Gadi eighteen, who looks says a hurry, Hassan Todi Emi Handley, Rekakala, who Rudama grade seven, Lema grade twelve, Hukalaka June, Impa Hosho, who eats Hitler Hilia Tabenya Hore. So, I'm at the so proposal. I want to add definitely in the good about seven. I'm a senior one. My why are you looming? So, those are the proposed dates. We have to, by law, as soon as there's approval by cabinet, we have to gazette the school calendar. We are not able to operate with a, a tentative school calendar, but again, that will be communicated on an ongoing basis. Uh, yeah, so people wanted to know when are we going to go back. So I've put those dates to say those are the proposed dates. The first cohort, if we're able to do all the things we're supposed to do in May, we're proposing that with the grade 7s and grade 12s, we start in June. It's a proposal. Because the NCC want us to come back to them, perhaps around the 18th, to tick all the boxes, to tell my gloves are figgy, social distancing, because we're working with sanitation, all the people with underlying conditions, we know them, this is what we're going to do them. Teachers who, are, who have underlying conditions, we're replacing them, we have been able to substitute them. All of those have to come to the command team, but because we have to plan and work back, we're proposing that the first of June will be the first phase. And again, to remind, or to take advantage of Bangla, because I, I think uh, people have to really appreciate that we hear them, we note what they're saying, and in most instances, consider what they're saying. There's most advice to say, and there was no place, plan to say, so Tata Yonki 13 million, so we follow Epsiga. There was no plan. So some phase grades could even be phased as late as September. But there are also lots of balances that we have to make, and I think we have to discuss as a nation. Because when we open the economy, the young mothers, schools are not only for tuition. Schools are also for psychosocial support. And parents are beginning to ask, what are we going to do if I'm an ECD, a value, and I'm seven, in a two-year-old, a five-year-old, uh, unattended because I don't, the, the, the centers are closed. So we're going to have to keep on negotiating, getting advice as to say, what is it that we do? But at every, as soon as the man is saying, every step of the way we'll be listening, but we can promise you also we will be sensible. Uh, sensible. Because it's about its safety, but also, Thank Thank you very much, uh, ministers. We will take another round of questions uh, because our intention, and you are right, uh, Minister Mtsekham, our intention is that we all work together. And uh, again, Minister Zimande, you are right. 
Nobody thought that we'll have certain pandemic visiting us. So we we are a listening government. We we know that this we can only uh, overcome this difficulty we are in if we work together. There is no other way. We can't overcome this with government working alone. It's just impossible. We need all society, all stakeholders to work with us uh, in dealing with this difficulty we are in. But what we know is that we are a resilient nation. We have gone through difficulties. We have overcome them. Uh, this one too, we will overcome. Now, uh, let's, oh, we have five. Okay. Let's start there. Let's see what, what's, uh, whether it is now more audible. Thank oh. you very much. Uh, the first quarter that we have is Annelie from Weekly, from Renberg Weekly. We, we are listening. Annelie, we are listening. Good day, can you hear me? Annelie, we can hear you very well. Can you continue? Yes, um, I just want to confirm if all of the CSAs would have to comply with the submission extension to 31 May, or is, um, or is there a specific extension process that companies would have to follow? Okay. Are you done? Thank you very much. Next. Next. Thank you very much, Mr. The second quarter that we have is Benita from Rhodes. Benita, you are through. Benita, we are listening. Benita. Benita. Looks like we have lost Benita. C can we get to the next caller? Most definitely, Minister. This, the next caller is Raphael from Village News. Raphael, you are through. Raphael, you are listening. I'm not sure whether not sure. we are not having difficulties of connectivity here. Uh, Bebet, mm -hmm. you just spoke about connectivity. Now we have difficulties of connectivity. I think we can get the USB too. I think let, let, let's get our, our WhatsApp uh, there. I, we know that we, we don't go wrong. They are all written down. Uh, uh, yes, Minister, thank you. The first question is from Mashako from SCBC News, is directed to the Minister of Basic Education. She's asking if a private school can prove that all systems are in place, will there also be delayed to reopen as it will not be receiving any benefits from the department? The next question is also directed to the Minister of Basic Education. What what plans, what's the plan for teachers that have comor, ooh, comor, com, comorbidities, yes, that doctors can identify, will they also be going back to school? Then there's a question from Matthew Service from Times Live, also to the Minister of Basic Education. What will happen with creches or other child care facilities, particularly for households where caregivers are working under the various lockdown levels? Then there's a question from Wonga from Inkonjane FM to the Minister of Higher Education. In terms of laptops and other equipment for tertiary students who are how are they going to, to get them since most students are coming from different provinces? Will they be going to fetch them from institutions? And is there a way to assist them with permits since there are strict law enforcement uh, regulations on uh, traveling in between provinces? And will the department be assisting with that? Then there is a question, this is a fifth question, Minister, from Bongegila from the Mail and Guardian, directed to the Minister of um, 
basic education. What plans are being made for those learners who are in grade 7 and 12 who share textbooks? Will a plan be made before they, they open to give them individual textbooks? Are there grade 7 and are grade 7 and 12 learners who use private, school, private scholar transport? Um, will, they be, will there be a way to liaise with the providers on what steps to take when transporting learners? And his last question is, there are teachers who work in different provinces but stay in a, in a different province. A teacher who stays in Margate but works in Pisana, for an example, what is going to happen with them as interprovincial traveling is not allowed? Will they be allowed to apply for permits? Well, le le let me answer something at least. I'll answer the last one and the other one of transport. Uh, with, with the opening or the risk adjusted approach to opening the economy, definitely there'll be more people who will need some form of transportation. And whenever our schools also open, there will be some kids and uh, students that will also use public transport. The Minister of Transport will be here tomorrow at 2 o'clock uh, to speak about what are we going to do in the arena of public transport for all sectors uh, that will be opening uh, under level four. So the minister will be here uh, on, on, on that score. Um, there was a last question. I wanted to answer it as well. Cross, uh, very simple. I thought that in the regulations we made that clear yesterday, that uh, anybody who has got to come for work purpose to go to any other province, first of all, there'll be a once-off uh, allowance that will be made to all such citizens who are coming from whatever province to another where they are working from. Uh, of course, like everybody else who needs to move from one province to the other, there is a norm that has been established that you must get permit. You must be permitted. But you can only be permitted if there is reason why you are going from one province to another because it is still prohib prohibited. So such teachers will be allowed because they will prove that indeed they are working in a particular province uh, and they are going there for purposes of work. But we also added that after you have gone there, you stay there. So there won't be this thing of going home every weekend because all of us are under lockdown but are now a different level, level four. So we will not be opening uh, these uh, provincial uh, borders, if you call them, that uh, people can move from one province to another every day, every weekend. There'll be a once-off opening where we'll all go to where we'll be working from, and after that, we will stay there. And that principle al uh, applies to everybody. It applies to teachers, it applies to workers that will be going to various industries uh, that will be opening in terms of the regulations that were announced yesterday by Minister Nkosazana Ramine Zuma and the team. Who wants to start, colleagues? <laughs> no, there was a question about private schools, uh, whether they will be allowed to operate. And in the list of consultations, we work very close with them. So what I expect is that, because we are saying an institution can only operate on the basis that it's codif compliant. And we are guided by the NCC. So it will depend that on <coughs> level four, or if it's in level three that they want it to open, what are the conditionalities in terms of the numbers of people in a sp specific space? So for now, as I say, the maximum 
in a group, it's 50. So if those private schools can convince ourselves and the national, is it COVID-19? <laughs> Coronavirus, Coronavirus uh, uh, 19, uh, a team, then they have to satisfy, they have a list of conditionalities that they've put in place and they'll have to go through the test. There was also a question about ECD. It has come out repeatedly to say, we're opening the economy, we say uh, people can go back to work. What's going to happen about childcare facilities? Some of the proposals that we have to consider are like, what if it's a, your, 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 your home base crash, who goes on the number two uh, in the neighborhood? What is going to happen? So we've not given full consideration, but it has come out repeatedly, and I think it's a matter that we have to be able to pronounce ourselves as soon as possible. So it has come out, and I think it's a matter that, as I say, we have to, 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 to respond to. Bearing in mind, and, and still said, it is not, there's, there's no medical evidence to say young children are resistant, but in all the deaths, I'm told there was no toddler that had died, even if parents were uh, both infected. But it's something that we'll have to get guidance from the con command team, but also from health. But it is a matter under consideration. Workers with comorbidities, it's the same with your over 60 and other people. So we've agreed with the unions and even ourselves to say if it's been declared which are these comorbidities that should be declared. Your asthma, your diabetes, it's not all of them. So if to petroleum, it goes, so they've specified them and we've agreed that we will have to work with the Department of Health to get those certificates. But what the union said, which is, I think, quite important, uh, quite important is to make sure that we agreed on how we're going to manage them. So when managers now in May go to schools, they're going to have to consider how many of their teachers have comorbidities, agree on the new work stream or work program, what is going to happen to them, so that as uh, they're still able to work, as, even if they're not at school. So the cool, schools could decide that, okay, so by the telemarking work, they'll work out what is it that, or they could be the ones that are doing preparations depending on their skills. It's the school management team which is going to agree how they're going to utilize them and how they're going to manage them. On scholar transport, the Minister Temple has, uh, has mentioned that in our plan also, we have considered all questions about the transport that we are providing, what needs to happen, the sanitation, the gloves, but also what happens to scholar transport where children are brought by their learners to school or they're using kibebe, you know, your, your vans to school. And we are, with Department of Health, going to really work on what are the, are the protocols, but it's something that is also under the plan. Okay, the cross, I think Minister Tembu has answered. And then in terms of also, there was a question about, or which is linked to the question of, of private schools. According to the plan or according to health, we also have to identify zones which are epicenters. So if, for instance, you have a small school, which is a multi-grade school, it has 50 kids in the classroom, there is no reason to say they can't come and work because there are 50, some uh, 27, and the teacher is teaching different grades at the same time. So again, we're going to have to consider, besides these broad uh, considerations of the millions that we're talking about, but there, there'll obviously be exceptional cases that will have to be subjected because to be subjected to your coronavirus 19 team things are Wednesday. <laughs> so we are going to have teams at every level, so as I said, at the sec at district, school, and at different levels, which are going to consider even exceptional cases, but all the exceptional cases are going to be 
really tested against standing principles that are there in the, your operating procedures. So, being to time is always easy. Let's go in them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Magelo, I'm going to play. We'll let's look. We'll let's go. 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 We'll let's when I was explaining the Chinese uh, way of crossing the river, but how? Pepe Romanjo also flew into Lula and Genesis to look to a woman's go pork. And Ben Afunuk seven salesos will stand to Kosham. A cleaning is good man as I wait. So Uncle Sobam San. Sizwe la manzi samba guo na ngopo, ngoba siya kadu gui hamba lentle. Thanks for that. Uh, just a few things, Mvela, I won't be long, because also, u emelo wa amla pa na ebaya mtlupu. I think u, 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 u Minister Motsekha, it's important that I just add on this. This thing that pass one, pass all, it's a no-no. Rather, the challenge that is posed by COVID-19 for us in education it's not a new thing, but it now needs to be speeded up to really develop alternative methods of assessment and not rely on one primary method. You bring two people together to write the exam. But ongoing assessment are things that are being used, but it will require that we become more creative around that. But we are assessing the actual performance, not pass one, pass all. Uh, something that was never the case in any case. There, there was also a question that has been sent to me about whether we plan to return fees or, or monies that have been paid for residences. No, we are not planning that. Because our commitment is still that we're going to finish the academic year. If that question happened to arise, maybe it can arise at another time. For now, there is no need to be returning. I was also asking some who were saying, Return fees. Get other NESFA some of fees as a weird bar. Because NESFA's fees are government fees. As what fund am a fees to government. As what keep it. Good name, the new fund and guy. Zagit. So we have not reached that stage. We understand what some are raising. Also, this issue has been raised by private accommodation providers who are saying they had set aside. Uh, accommodation for students, but they are not there and they are not going to rent what's going to happen. Well, we said to them, you are business, you must apply in terms of government business rescue. Uh, that has been uh, uh, supported, although we are, we are engaging them. Uh, the question of uh, institutions in distress, this also, we will work to identify institutions in distress. We have identified them. Not that we'll work to identify. We have identified them, but we'll have to find ways and means of how we deal with their distress. That will include reprioritizing our own little budget as the department, but also we expect universities themselves to also reprioritize. Everyone must reprioritize. Even this issue of laptops, institutions need to reprioritize. For instance, there have been savings, by the way, during COVID-19. Let's not run away from that. There's been no travel by aeroplane. There's been no travel overseas or outside the country. So we need to reprioritize, amongst other things, to say not a single student must be left without a laptop, if possible, say by the end of this year or whenever we are able to, to actually reach that overall goal. So we are calling on institutions also to do what they are asking us to do. Uh, there is a question also that has reached me that we must also involve veterinary doctors for clinical training also to return. I think I will raise that issue. Also, o Minister Utitiza has raised that issue. Because 
So it's something that uh, we will need to actually urgently address with the ministers who are in charge of the, of the regulations. I think that it's an important point. Annally, yes, if I heard your question well, we, uh, we have changed the deadline for submission of workplace skills plans by employers so that they can claim money from the CETAs for training. We've shifted it now to the end of May, 31st of May. It's normally end of April. However, Anneli, I do need to say to you, we do have a challenge because now the president announced a payment holiday of levies. Now, it means that we will have to relook at the CETA budgets. Although, on my part, I have started to engage business in particular, and I will be engaging the trade unions to say, how do we deal with this four months payment holiday? But insofar as the deadline is concerned, that's, 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 that's the one. The issue of what do we do with gadgets and so on, we'll communicate that. Because at this point in time, we are uncertain where and how we are going to be able to get gadgets. We are committed to get them. But we will then be able to communicate how that will be done. We are engaging with institutions to assess the need and, and, uh, and so on. Uh, if, if you are not. But as we say, we are committed. The other question that has been asked as the last issue that I'm, I'm, I'm talking to now, uh, Minister Mtim, is that also a message from my, my MLO. Are we not going to give exception to people who are doing research, professors, researchers, and so on? Well, if I am not mistaken, the sentiment is on se essential research that is needed now to tackle COVID. That's going to be the priority. Like the work done by Professor Slim Karim, which is about we have to make exception that those researchers are able to go to work because they are researching, some of them are researching possible vaccines and all that, if it has got to do with COVID-19. Because without taking over your role in Velasa, because you are the one who makes the overall commentary, but I must say that the danger we must guard against, by the way, Professor Mampuel, you are right about this. I'm not talking just to you now, just to everyone. We must always be careful, and the president insists on this. We mustn't lift the lockdown or the phases by stealth. Because if we start allowing bits and pieces like now, will you allow us to come and fetch our laptops, you know? Uh, we, we, we may end up giving so many exemptions that in the end there is no lockdown and in the end we cause enormous damage by subjecting our people to the danger of actually uh, being infected by this virus. Uh, we, we will be taking the last round now, the third and last round. Let's try and see whether those who are calling in are there. I hope that uh, we will be able to get them connected now. Bangas disappoint in front of ministers of education. Uh, can we get uh, the online callers to come in? Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, the first call is Benita from Rods Music Radio. Benita, Benita. Yes. You, you can continue, you Benita. Benita. Thank you, Minister. Um, my question is to the Minister of Basic Education. I would like the Minister to please clarify what provisions have been made for those who are meant to be rewriting their matric examinations this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well and clear and to the point. Next. Next. The second caller is Raphael from Village News. Raphael, you're through. Raphael, you are listening. Raphael, Raphael. 
Sorry, Raphael, we can't hear you. We don't know whether oh, it looks like you, you've been disconnected or you disconnected yourself. Can we get from the WhatsApp team? We, uh, yes, Minister. And that this is the last time now that we are taking questions. I don't know how many you have. I'm told that you can count. <laughs> <laughs> Can't disappoint me in front of educated ministers. And the uh, whole of South Africa. <laughs> yes. How, how many do we have then? We have about uh, seven questions. Seven? Yes. Okay. I think uh, since we could not take those, let's just take those and right. finish. Okay. Uh, Bongani Hans from Independent Media in Durban is asking the Minister of Higher Education. Um, he's heard that there are a number of university students who are deregistering. Has the Minister heard about this? And what, and what might be the cause? What is the Department going to do to deal with this if it is true? Then there's a question from Bongani Gulani of EWN, also to the Minister of Higher Education. When you say you will, when you say distress institutions, do you have an amount of how much you might need to help them, and for for how long? Tseho from ENCA is asking the Minister of Basic Education, what's the plan with online applications for grades eight and one? What happens to ECD schools? Then there's a question from Kabelo Kumalo from the Sunday world. You have made mention of the fact that the school academic year must be saved. Will this be done at all costs, or will you be guided by which risk level the country is at, or at a particular point? Cabello, sorry? Basic education. Uh, including you, including you, the man. Why are you from me, Okay. 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 Then there is a question from Bukega, who is a freelance journalist and is directed to the Minister of Basic Education. As from the 4th of May, it will be the start of the preparation for the reopening of schools. Does this apply? Does this, ap does this apply to all schools, including the schools in rural areas such as the Eastern Cape, where they hardly have proper infrastructure such as toilets, safe classrooms, clean water, and enough desks? If the answer is yes, does the department have enough time to build those, the infrastructure in a month and prepare the learners to go back to school in those areas? Um, I think it's the last two remaining. Okay. Uh, then there is a question from Nelisa from Health E News, is directed to the Minister of Basic Edu Education. Has the department considered the safety of teachers who have underlying conditions? If so, what plans are being put in place to protect their lives? I think we've lives? answered that question. Yes, yes, we have. I think um, even journalists should at least listen a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, then there is a question, Minister, from Precious of Opera News to the Minister of Higher... Oh, this one is also answered. It's with regards to what concessions are made for students regarding the payment of residence since they haven't been in res uh, during the lockdown period. Answered, uh, too. Can we also... There was just a question on uh, the example of Margate and Mbizana. Uh, and the person has sent a, clari a clarification to say that the distance is 10 kilometers. So it would be someone who would travel every day to from Margaret to Mbizana and back again. So would they then need a permit every day to do the up and down, or how would that work? Because it's someone who oh. would be in two different provinces but would do the daily commuting. Oh, no, I, I think the Minister of Basic Education would be able to answer that one. <laughs> No, it's just like all commuting students and commuting teachers, but she'll be able to answer it. Now, there was a question about what happened, to, what's going to happen to your supplementary exams, your improvements, which were, as I said earlier in the statement, they were supposed to start on Monday the 4th. And I did indicate in the statement, Minister, that we've, we have not, because of the virus, corona, the virus, virus, there's been, <laughs> there's been lots of uh, 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 difficulties in getting them. So we have postponed them, 
So all the learners, the 350,000 that were supposed to start on Monday, will only, will only be able to write in December. That's why I mentioned that this year we're going to have more than one million learners for the first time sitting for exams, because it includes learners who are supposed to have written from Monday. On applications and many other outstanding matters that we have ordering of books and all sorts of things that are administrative, we will start attending to them on Monday and make the necessary announcements. Because all along when the sector was locked completely, we're not able to do some of the things that we're supposed to do. So different provinces will communicate. We actually are on the phone twice a week with provinces and we will and we have agreed on strengthening our communication after submitting this plan. So we will communicate uh, properly with the schools. The question of Who's of fun to say food with him a command team? Who would he say send the log na log na log? Ye babas are too tiny loon or an loonang, so it's not going to be by hook or crook. Who's a young or woody is simo say a woman now? Must not woom is simo says or one girl alone. So a little di bula cack hang, little di bula ha my mo adumela. So that's the answer. So, so we'll really only open when. The, uh, the, the, the environment and the space allows us. And fortunately, we are not the only decision makers in this instance. It's the team and the cabinet. So at Mangi Changi Chingetu, so so Vuta Songa Sisis, even Nabaza had no teacher, no one. So teachers had to have to also agree. They've put condition, conditionalities to say, I see, see. If Lena le ayi kubata bezi, so sifume le nguti ayi mani tanizi maslungse. Parents said as about two million bantu na be tu kwenye nzegi log na log na log. And those are all the things that we need the whole month of May to deal with to and to 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 ensure that our schools are, are ready for opening. Uh, yeah, now across, I think we'll, we we have agreed that we'll take. Uh, issues one step at a time because under AMA regulations, they're not able to deal with it, the whole spectrum of, of, of matters. For instance, it's not a bizarre matter. Every day, people from Pumalang, it's cross border. So those things have arisen. Every day, there are kids who stay in Paris or in the free state who come to to how then because maybe there's a special school again we we've, we've discussed that we'll have to deal with it case by case we're told that we said we'll deal with it case by case so it's happening throughout the country we are aware of that even the minister of uh, 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 it's home affairs that also in terms of cross-border country to country. There are kids who come, who go to school in Zirast. I know every day they have school buses coming from Botswana, coming to South Africa in Zirast, those bordering areas. The same there are areas around Mafike, where there's just really a fence is there. This kids must be by school in uh, uh, South Africa in Mafiking, in that Mafiking area. So those who are uh, we are quite aware of those challenges, and we've agreed as cabinet to so say we'll deal with those matters case by case. But we will not, as Minister Mtembu said, go any wholesale. So there's no one who knows that. So they'll have to be dealt with case by case. There must be application. There must be evidence, and yeah. So that's the answer. Contouring it, Padile, and Sayas and Padile, Umbuzang, Padim Pendu, and Sas no Tumbuz or Konubuti. I think Padile and the opening of schools have to be uh, uh, quite in compliance, and then I think that the schools will not. The same Padim Pendu and Tangwas at the same time. 
Also, Uboni answer ungas ubonum booze. Menangigan surely go fund the handwriting. Yeah, it in Labing Palan. Bon Hans, I have not had to be quite honest uh, that there are some students who are deregistering. If you have got more information, please pass that on to us because it is a matter of concern. We would not like to encourage any student to deregister. We all have to stick it to be in and travel this road, difficult as it is, you know, until we all are able to be across the river. So if you have got more information, I haven't heard of students deregistering as a, as a result of this situation. Ubonga is asking about distressed institutions. What we have said is that, for instance, we have identified institutions that are battling. Out of the 26 universities, there's 14, I think I said that, and 10 in a really difficult situation. We have asked every university and every Tivet college develop institutional plans. Because what we are providing here is a framework and a guide. We do apologize for that break in transmission. Let's take you back there.